Coming up on AgWeek TV, cover crops are gaining ground and are good business for a couple of North Dakota operations. The combine is rolling, but you may not recognize the crop it's picking up. We'll tell you all about it. And these are tough times for cattle producers. What can be done to help them? Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Industrial hemp is a controlled substance in the U.S. because the plant is the same species as marijuana without the THC. The 2014 Farm Bill allows states to grow it for research. So a handful of North Dakota farmers participated in the state's first hemp pilot program this season. Our Ag Week crew checked it out at harvest at one plot near Jamestown. Jamie Edwards is one of four farmers involved in the hemp pilot program. Sometimes you gotta make a little leap of faith and, and try some stuff. He planted it in May, and in July, he hosted a plot tour. You don't wanna take all the stock, you just wanna take the, the head portion of it. And now... You know, the males are all dried up. They've been done for a month or more, and it's just the females left. It's harvest time. It feels great. <laughs> kind of a load off. The program allowed him 15 acres. Using a John Deere S680 with a draper head, the process is smooth. It has combined a lot easier than we thought was gonna. It, it combines a little tough, like uh, soybeans when you have about an hour left of the day, when it just starts getting a little bit tough, that's about how it combines. And, Beyond that, it feeds real nice and thrashes out real nice. Once the combine is done, the hemp is clean. This is an old Crippen grain cleaner. It's from about the 1960s. And we've kind of retrofitted it a little bit to work with the hemp. Dad and I built these dust collectors and it drops everything into the barrel. Before we did that, it was blowing everywhere and it was kind of a nightmare. With the hemp, it has to be on air almost you know, immediately because it's, it's combined wetter. So we've actually put air tubes in the truck with a fan on it. It takes like four hours to clean 5,000 pounds just because it's, it's an older cleaner. Jamie says he's pleased with the crop in seeing yields better than expected. You know, we've had a, a perfect season for it, had the right amount of rains at the right times, and, you know, next year we can totally bomb out. Now the hemp is off to Carrington to a company called Healthy Oil Seeds. Roger is talking about giving us a dollar a pound for it off the combine, and from what the seed tender scale is showing, we're around that 1,200 to 1,300 pounds, so that's putting us about $1,000 an acre ahead. So I don't even remember what corn looks like at that price. <laughs> Edward says some of the hemp will be roasted for food and some will be turned into oil. No word yet if the state plans to have the pilot program again next year. This week's crop stop takes us to the corner of northeastern North Dakota near Edmore. Some farms in that region have received 30 inches of rain this season. Nickel Pates came across Jason Hodney and his uncle still harvesting wheat due to the extremely wet year. It's been a pretty drug out year, I guess. It's everything so wet that it's hard to, to get anything done. Most years we'd almost be done with tillage by now. It's not too good when the, you don't have no very good prices and then it's all this fight to get it. You know, hope for better next year, I guess, is all we, what we do. Another problem has been putting ruts in the fields, something Hodney says they just have to deal with next year. Many in agribusiness are concerned about Bayer Crop Sciences' planned buyout of Monsanto. The proposed $66 billion merger raises the question, is bigger better or worse for growers? We asked some top ag experts and academics gathered recently at the Agriculture Bioscience International Conference for their thoughts on the merger. 
I think it's going to be a great marriage, personally. I think uh, what Monsanto brings in their uh, seed technologies as well as their data analytics and what Bayer is going to bring in terms of their uh, chemistry and, and their research pipelines there. I think it's going to be very robust and very good. It's always uh, scary when uh, companies get bigger and bigger and, and sort of reduces competition, so that might not be a good thing. But Monsanto has almost been a tainted word now, and it may be that a merged company might have a new identity who can just move on because the science is solid and we know it's probably going to be okay. The efficiencies that consolidation can bring when done correctly, I think can be a great opportunity. So hopefully that's what we see uh, from that. And I think that there will be farmer concerns on less providers in the field of who's setting the price per bag on their seed corn. And I think that's something that we'll have to stay uh, attuned to, especially in today's market environment. Bear's offer from Monsanto is not really driven by farmer interest or by what's best uh, for the farmer, it's, it's, a, it's a whole Wall Street play, right? I, I think it should be okay for farmers long term but really removing competition from that trade market, that particular in soybeans, I don't, I don't necessarily view as a, as a positive thing. The buyout still faces regulatory approval. Coming up on Ag Week TV, cover crops are good for the soil and good for business for some North Dakota companies. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. This week on Northland Outdoors, tournament anglers aren't known for using kids' Barbie or Snoopy rods to win tournaments, but we found a group of diehard fishermen that will use anything if it helps in the fight against cancer. And we'll see how one fishing fanatic's personal cancer fight has inspired a movement amongst anglers all over the state. And finally, a Northland family folk art tradition that survived five generations and is still going strong today. That's all this week on Northland Outdoors. It's another chilly morning. I hear the fish are really biting, but so is that wind chill, so it might be a good... Don't let cold weather keep you indoors. Trust Under Armour from Home of Economy. Under Armour men and women's base layers are engineered to trap body warmth, wick away moisture, and keep you warm and dry while you're active outdoors. Stay comfortable all day long with Under Armour base layers. Available at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you. No matter what storms come your way, the harvest will always be protected so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. A North Dakota business uses jackhammers to soften soil, not the construction equipment, but a type of radish. Dennis Haugen, farmer and president of General Grain Company, started working with radishes six years ago when the cover crops were just starting to gain popularity. He discovered one type that grew a big root, perfect for cover cropping, and now the market is growing. Shauna, cover crop cocktails have been a big deal in conservation and agriculture this the last several years, and jackhammer radishes here at Hannaford, North Dakota is one of the places that we're seeing some changes. They're starting to realize the benefits of cover crop with soil health. They're called cocktails because different mixes of seeds can solve different soil problems, erosion control, salinity issues, absorb or retain moisture, or soften the soil. 
You want different recipes for doing different things. You know, you've got, got so many pounds of radish, you've, you've got uh, turnips, you've got barley, you've got oats, you've got rye. Haugen's cover crop business emerged from his seed cleaning business in 2010 as cover crops were gaining popularity. So this would be where we've got radish seed customers. Almost by accident, Haugen realized one of his radish strains had the kind of root that was perfect for cover cropping. It was just kind of by dumb luck. We found out that there was some rogue strains of daikon radish floating around out there that would bolt and bloom and produce seed, but they didn't do a root. By luck, the seed that we were working on, that we were working with, had, had the good root characteristics that the cover crop industry is after. This is uh, one of the roots on the radish shell. We don't see, we don't large radish roots on that when we do seed production because we plant at a higher planting rate. Since the root could penetrate the soil so well, like a jackhammer, they patented the name and entered an important new phase of their farming operation. While there's no shortage of change in the cover crop industry, the need for these solutions is here to stay. For Ag Week TV in Hannaford, North Dakota, this is Mikkel Pates. Haugen ships product across the U.S. and into Canada. Next year, they're starting seed production in Australia. Aerial seeding of cover crops is also gaining more attention in the region. Seeds are dropped onto newly harvested or still unharvested fields. Planting from the air doesn't damage the standing crops and gives the cover crops more time to grow before winter. Jonathan Knudsen visited a Wapiton farm that's giving it a try. Cover crops are drawing increased attention across the upper Midwest. So is aerial application of fall planted cover crops. Today I'm going to switch my plane over to dry spreading and I'm going to put a cover crop. It's a mixture of rye and rapeseed. It's become more of a, a common thing or I'd say guys are trying it uh, to see that what the benefits are. What are some of the benefits? Why, why would maybe farmers want to consider this? The soil health, breaking up the soil, being able to no-till uh, the soil and um, let the rapeseed or turnips or radishes, that type of product to uh, break up the soil uh, in the fall and through the winter time. I put the cover crops in this field in the spring and the fall to check out the area application versus the ground application. I think the biggest thing is, is just do the application. The spring application, you know, gave me two, two and a half, four months of growth versus the other application. I've only got a month on it, but I both feel they're well worth it any time you can do it. This corn will be harvested in late October. The rye and rapeseed that were just planted by air will be eaten by cattle over the winter. It's one example of how fall planted cover crops can be an important tool for farmers. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Clint is seeding about 5,000 acres of cover crops this year, up from 100 five years ago. Your agri-weather forecast is up next on Ag Week TV and later, what's being done to help cow producers beef up exports to Japan and China? Time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials, get more from every acre. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. 
top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Ag Week TV weather is brought to you by Kaler Farms. Weather portion of Ag Week now will look back at the month of September, and it was a soggy one with a really strong finish. Of course, the last week, flooding rains all over northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, many rivers at near record levels, which is unusual because it's September, and that makes this really a, a really unusual flooding event. Dry weather this past week has not helped the overall soggy pattern, and the outlook for October, unfortunately, the weather a little cooler, but I don't really see any let up in the overall rainy cycle. Drought monitor across the northern tri-state area, still a few dry pockets out west, but most of the region is not dry at all. Of course, the drought monitor doesn't show you where it's too wet, which would be much of southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, much of the northern part of the Red River Valley. There are still dry pockets in the east and south. Southern California remains very dry. Found this this week. This is an interesting depiction of rainfall this summer going back to May. Now watch as we accumulate totals throughout the summer. By the time we get to the end of the first week in June, there are some wet pockets. It's already started raining in the northern Red River Valley. Much of Iowa is fairly dry at the first week of June. Flash forward ahead, this is going to stop now about the 4th of July. It's gone wet across the northern Red River Valley in northern North Dakota. It's still dry in much of central Iowa. Stay tuned on that one. And there are pockets of the eastern Corn Belt that are fairly dry. Forward again now to the end of July, and so much for the dry summer in parts of the northern plains. Iowa still fairly dry in central Iowa, but that would quickly fill in during August, and this map only goes up through late August. It doesn't even show the flooding rains in September. So for the summer, you can see where it's wet, the upper Midwest and the northern plains. This week, we've got a jet stream with high amplitude, but it will bring one more area of low pressure into the middle. The rains will be a little further north on this one. We'll briefly tap into some colder weather in the northern plains, but I think that will be temporary. I don't see the overall pattern turning uh, significantly below average. So the forecast then, first of all, for temperatures, the warm areas will be along the east and the south. Much of the north will be average to cool, with the really cool weather confined mostly out to the north. Northern Rockies. And this week, the first week of October, the southwest looks dry. The southeast, the same tropical moisture. There will likely be some significant rains, mostly in North Dakota and points west. Not quite so bad further to the east. But the second week of October, I'm still expecting a rainy pattern in the Midwest. The dry weather in the south, the southeast should be dry unless there's a hurricane. And the wet weather will be from eastern North Dakota once again down through Iowa. So what are we looking at for this week? The first half of October, still wet in the north central. A temporary cool air intrusion. Cool Rockies, but still warm along the east. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmers' job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, that more people can eat. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. 
reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. This week on Northland Outdoors, tournament anglers aren't known for using kids' Barbie or Snoopy rods to win tournaments, but we found a group of diehard fishermen that will use anything if it helps in the fight against cancer. And we'll see how one fishing fanatic's personal cancer fight has inspired a movement amongst anglers all over the state. And finally, a Northland family folk art tradition that survived five generations and is still going strong today. That's all this week on Northland Outdoors. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. The cattle market has experienced one of the largest drops in history over the last 18 months. Compounding the losses are the wild daily price swings in the futures market, making it difficult to use the Live Cattle Futures Board as a hedging tool. The Chicago Merck has proposed changes. Ag Week's Michelle Rook got producer reaction. It's been a tough year in the cattle business, with a record drop in prices and the most erratic markets cattlemen have ever experienced. It's just a little troubling with the way the market is so volatile on these cattle markets. Um, it's really hard to protect yourself as a producer uh, when the markets move $3 up or down any day at any given time. Cattlemen say the fundamentals aren't driving the price swings, but the move to all electronic trade. The algorithm traders that are trading in nanosecond time and uh, over probably overextending the market one way or the other. As a result, cattle industry groups have been working with the CME on a remedy. However, they have come up with their own proposed changes, including a live cattle futures contract that would be settled to a cash index, which is something cattlemen aren't in favor of. They say true transparency in the cash market will only come from more negotiated sales. The five state region has the most cash traded cattle in the whole country. The South is pretty much all on uh, grids and formulas and all these other deals. In the meantime, cattle producers say the futures may be broken as a risk management tool. I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Beefing up beef exports, especially to Japan and China, would be a big help to cattle producers. That was a big topic at the North Dakota Stockmen's Association annual meeting in Minot. Tracy Bruner, a producer from Kansas and president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, spoke at the meeting. He said the biggest focus right now is on expanding global markets, especially Japan, with the help of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We are currently at a disadvantage to Australia going into Japan. Uh, we're losing $400,000 in beef sales every day to Australia into the Japanese market. In 2015, American beef producers lost $300 million in beef sales due to the tariff rate disparity that exists. Another key issue is the opening of the Chinese market for beef. China has been officially closed to American beef for 13 years, but just announced the ban will be lifted. Times are tough for many farmers, but does it compare to the 80s? Jonathan Knudsen shares his thoughts on what some fear is a coming ag apocalypse.
time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to seven feet deep with boot sizes of four to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. My name is Joel Kaler owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. We've been hearing the news for months now. Low prices, high inputs, but does that mean pending disaster? Jonathan Knutson makes his prediction in this week's commentary. If you know anything about egg, you know times are tough. And you've probably heard the talk, it's the 80s all over again. Egg apocalypse ahead. I'm skeptical, not that I'm minimizing the problem. The egg economy is struggling. But I remember the 80s. They were truly bad. Interest rates pushing 20% and crippling debt loads. Now, rates are closer to zero than 20%, and debt isn't nearly as heavy. I'm not saying the 80s won't come back, but they're not here yet. It's not even close. Egg apocalypse ahead? Maybe, but be a little skeptical. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week. <laughs>